Hello, American stars who died today, family, and welcome back to our channel. We have received the somber news of the passing of extraordinary talents, and today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Before we start, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. The world of hip hop has lost a rising star, Rich Homie Kwan, the Atlanta rapper who captured the spirit of the streets with hits like Type of Way and Flex, has passed away at the age of 33. His death, confirmed by the Fulton County Medical Examiner, remains shrouded in mystery, with an autopsy scheduled to determine the cause. Born to Quantes Lamar, Quan became an integral part of the Atlanta rap scene in the middle 2010s, emerging alongside Young Thug to help establish the city as a rap capital. His breakthrough came in 2013, when his anthem, Type of Way, soared to number one, 12 on the Billboard Hot 100, solidifying his place in the industry. He continued to ride the wave of success with platinum hits like My Hitta, with YG and Jeezy, and Lifestyle, with Rich Gang. Quan's influence reached far beyond the charts. His distinct style and soulful delivery resonated with fans worldwide earning him over 3 billion streams across his catalog. He was more than just a rapper. He was a storyteller whose music painted vivid pictures of his life and struggles. His last project, Family and Moolah, Reloaded, released in 2022, was a testament to his relentless drive and passion for his craft. Tributes have poured in from the hip-hop community, with artists like Boozy Badaz, Jackies, and Quavo expressing their grief and honoring Quan's legacy. His music, characterized by its raw emotion and authenticity, will continue to inspire. As we say goodbye to rich homie Quan, we remember him not just for his contributions to hip hop, but for his unwavering spirit and the impact he made in such a short time. Rest in peace, Quan. Your voice will echo in the hearts of fans forever. James Darren, the beloved actor, singer, and director, passed away at the age of 88 due to heart failure. Known for his charm, talent, and timeless appeal, Darren captured hearts across generations through his diverse roles on screen and his unforgettable voice. Born James William Ercolani in Philadelphia on June 8, 1936, Darren's journey into the entertainment world began with aspirations of acting, studying under the legendary Stella Adler. His career took off in the late 1950s with Columbia Pictures, where he quickly became a teen idol. Darren gained widespread fame as Moondoggy in the surf classic Gidget and its sequels, establishing him as a leading man of his time. His talent extended beyond acting. His hit single, Goodbye Cruel World in 1961, cemented his status as a pop culture icon. Darren's versatile career included notable film roles in The Gene Krupa Story, The Guns of Navarone, and Diamond Head. On television, he won fans as Dr. Tony Newman in The Time Tunnel, and as Officer James Corrigan in T.J. Hooker. In the 1990s, he charmed a new generation with his portrayal of Vic Fontaine, a holographic singer and advisor in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. His smooth, Sinatra-inspired performances on the show led him back to recording music, resulting in albums that celebrated the classic American songbook. In addition to his acting and singing, Darren found success as a director, working on popular series like The A-Team, Silk Stockings, and Beverly Hills, 90210. His career, marked by both highs and lows, reflected his belief in resilience and the importance of staying true to oneself. Darren's legacy is one of warmth, talent, and enduring appeal. He was not just a star of his era, but a timeless figure whose work continues to resonate. Beyond his professional achievements, Darren was a devoted family man who valued his loved ones above all else. He is survived by his children, who carry on his legacy of artistry and heart. James Darren will be remembered for the joy and inspiration he brought to countless fans around the world. Obi and Defo, who passed away at the age of 51, was an American actor, yoga teacher, and advocate for the arts. Known for his memorable roles as Body Wells on Dawson's Creek and Ragnar in Stargate SG-1, Defo was celebrated not just for his talent on screen, but also for his unwavering commitment to community and personal growth. Born on October 29, 1972, in Los Angeles, 
Indifo's journey into the arts was marked by passion and resilience. A graduate of Yale University's drama school, he went on to build a diverse acting career, appearing in popular series like Angel, The West Wing, The Jamie Foxx Show, Third Rock from the Sun, Half and Half, Crossing Jordan, and both Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, and Star Trek, Voyager. His roles often highlighted his depth as an actor and his ability to connect deeply with his audience. Beyond acting, Indefo was a dedicated yoga teacher and a fierce advocate for arts education. He founded the nonprofit Arts Alliance for Humanity, an organization committed to preserving arts education in public schools and communities. Through his work, Indefo sought to empower others, fostering creativity, wellness, and a sense of belonging. Indefo's life took a dramatic turn in August 2019 when he was involved in a tragic accident that resulted in the loss of both legs above the knee. Despite this life-altering event, Indefo's spirit remained unbroken. He continued to inspire those around him with his resilience, courage, and dedication to making the world a better place. His Nigerian heritage and personal journey shaped his outlook on life, fueling his work with a sense of purpose and empathy. Indefo's contributions to the arts and his community extended far beyond the screen, leaving a lasting impact on those who knew him and those who were touched by his performances. Obi Indefo's legacy is one of strength, kindness, and the power of art to heal and connect. He will be deeply missed, but forever remembered for his indomitable spirit and the light he brought into the world. Phil Donahue, the pioneering talk show host and media personality, passed away at the age of 88, following a long illness. Known as the King of Daytime Talk, Donahue transformed television with The Phil Donahue Show, the first major talk show to feature audience participation. His groundbreaking format and fearless approach to discussing controversial topics left an indelible mark on American media. Born in Cleveland, Ohio on December 21, 1935, Donahue grew up in a working-class Irish Catholic family. After graduating from the University of Notre Dame, he began his career in broadcasting, quickly making a name for himself as a sharp and engaging interviewer. In 1967, The Phil Donahue Show debuted in Dayton, Ohio, and eventually went into nationwide syndication, running for 29 years and nearly 7,000 episodes. The show tackled divisive issues such as civil rights, consumer protection, and war, giving a platform to voices on both sides of the political spectrum. Donahue's influence extended beyond the U.S., as he co-hosted the U.S.-Soviet Space Bridge in the 1980s, a series of televised discussions between American and Soviet citizens during the Cold War. His commitment to fostering understanding and dialogue was a hallmark of his career. In the early 2000s, Donahue returned to television with a brief stint on MSNBC, where he continued to advocate for free speech and the open exchange of ideas. Throughout his career, Donahue received numerous accolades, including eight Daytime Emmy Awards, a Peabody Award, and induction into the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Hall of Fame. In 2024, he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Joe Biden, recognizing his significant contributions to media and public discourse. Phil Donahue's legacy is defined by his courage to address difficult topics and his dedication to elevating public dialogue. He was not just a broadcaster, he was a voice for those often unheard. Donahue is survived by his wife, actress Marlo Thomas, his four remaining children, and his beloved dog, Charlie. His influence on television and his commitment to advocacy will be remembered and celebrated for generations to come. Alain Delon, who passed away at the age of 88, was a towering figure in French cinema, leaving behind a legacy that defined an era of European film. Delon died following a prolonged period of ill health after suffering a stroke in 2019, rarely venturing out from his estate in France's Val de Loire region in his final years. Delon captivated audiences worldwide with his striking blue eyes, magnetic screen presence, and his portrayals of complex characters, from charming anti-heroes to brooding killers. Rising to fame in the 1960s through iconic roles in Lucino Visconti's Rocco and His Brothers and The Leopard, Delon's career spanned more than five decades. He became synonymous with the archetype of the melancholic and enigmatic leading man, as seen in his role in Jean-Pierre Melville's Le Samurai, where his portrayal of a lone hitman cemented his status as a cinematic legend. 
Often compared to Frank Sinatra for his handsome looks, Delon's charm extended beyond the screen. However, his connections with the underworld and involvement in several scandals added an aura of danger that only enhanced his public persona. Despite these controversies, he was celebrated as a cultural icon, with French President Emmanuel Macron hailing him as a giant of French culture. Delon's personal life was equally storied and tumultuous. Born just outside Paris, his early years were marked by hardship, foster care, and a troubled adolescence that eventually led him to the French Marines. After a series of ups and downs, his chance discovery at the Cannes Film Festival launched him into stardom. Beyond acting, Delon was a shrewd businessman, leveraging his fame into various ventures, including cosmetics and racehorses. His love life, marked by high-profile romances with stars like Romy Schneider and Nico, further captivated the public imagination. Alain Delon's passing marks the end of an era. He was more than a star. He was a monument of French cinema whose impact on film and culture will be remembered for generations. Peter Marshall, who passed away at the age of 98, was a beloved game show host, television and radio personality, singer and actor. Marshall died of kidney failure at his home in Encino, Los Angeles, after a remarkable career that spanned more than six decades. Born Ralph Pierre Lecoq on March 30, 1926, in Clarksburg, West Virginia, Marshall faced early hardships, including the tragic loss of his father, which shaped his resilience and determination. After serving in the U.S. Army during World War II, he embarked on a showbiz career, first as a comedian and then as a performer in movies, television, and Broadway. Marshall is best known as the original host of the iconic game show, The Hollywood Squares, which he hosted from 1966 to 1981. With his quick wit and charming presence, he guided audiences through more than 5,000 episodes, making the show a beloved staple of American television. His friendly rapport with celebrities and his ability to keep the game lively and engaging made him a household name and a pioneer of game show hosting. Beyond the Hollywood squares, Marshall continued to contribute to television with appearances on various game shows, radio programs, and as a character actor in both film and television. His hosting talents extended to his own short-lived music and comedy series, The Peter Marshall Variety Show, and a popular midday radio show on the Music of Your Life Network. In 2002, he returned to his roots on the Hollywood squares, as a guest panelist, delighting fans with his nostalgic presence. Throughout his life, Marshall remained a versatile performer, with Broadway credits including roles in Skyscraper and La Cage aux Folles. He even narrated the Rosemarie documentary film Wait for Your Laugh in 2017, demonstrating his enduring connection to the entertainment industry. Peter Marshall's legacy is that of a multi-talented entertainer who brought joy to millions, he was a master of his craft, a beloved figure of American television, and a man whose warmth and humor will be fondly remembered by fans and colleagues alike. Gina Rowlands, who passed away at the age of 94, was a trailblazing actress whose nearly seven-decade-long career left an indelible mark on film, television, and stage. Rowlands died from complications of Alzheimer's disease at her home in Indian Wells, California, after a courageous battle with the illness. Born on June 19, 1930, in Madison, Wisconsin, Rollins was renowned for her fierce and emotive performances, often collaborating with her husband, the legendary actor-director John Cassavetes. Together, they created a groundbreaking body of work that redefined independent cinema, with Rollins delivering unforgettable roles in films such as A Woman Under the Influence and Gloria, both of which earned her Academy Award nominations. Her portrayal of complex, flawed women challenged traditional portrayals of female characters and solidified her reputation as one of the most important actresses of her time. Rowland's talent extended beyond her collaborations with Cassavetes. She won four Emmy Awards and two Golden Globes, and her range was further showcased in performances like Another Woman, directed by Woody Allen, and in her son Nick Cassavetes' film, The Notebook, where she played the heartwarming older version of Rachel McAdams' character. Her contributions to cinema were recognized in 2015 when she received an Honorary Academy Award for her unique and impactful performances. Described by The New Yorker's Richard Brody as the most important and original movie actor of the past half-century plus, 
Rowlands was a force of nature, able to convey profound vulnerability and strength on screen. Beyond her artistic achievements, Rowlands was a devoted mother to her three children, Nick, Alexandra, and Zoe, all of whom followed in her footsteps as actor-directors. She was also a steadfast advocate for creative expression and pushed boundaries throughout her life, inspiring countless performers who followed. Gina Rowlands' legacy as a pioneering actress will forever be remembered. Her extraordinary ability to bring raw emotion to her roles and her dedication to authentic storytelling have left a lasting impact on the world of cinema, making her a true icon whose influence will be felt for generations to come. Breaking news. At 86, Bill Cosby is reportedly in pretty good health, according to his representative, Andrew Wyatt, who spoke to RadarOnline.com. The comedian, who underwent two significant surgeries in 2019 to clear blockages in his carotid arteries, has made notable strides in his recovery since his release from prison in June 2021. Wyatt shared that Cosby gained 12 pounds in 12 days after returning home, crediting the attentive care provided by his wife Camille, 79. Despite his physical recovery, Cosby is struggling with severe paranoia, fearing for his safety whenever he steps outside. This anxiety, intensified by his complete blindness and reliance on a walking cane, has confined the couple to their home. According to Wyatt, the Cosbys feel like prisoners in their own home due to potential threats, particularly linked to the past allegations against Cosby. To safeguard his health, the couple has drastically reduced their public appearances and avoids watching the news to manage Cosby's blood pressure. Wyatt highlighted Cosby's fear of being targeted, creating an environment of heightened caution and isolation. The couple's retreat marks a significant shift from their once public lifestyle, underscoring the ongoing complexities surrounding Cosby's public legacy.